Welcome to a special edition of Newt's News for the Jewish New Year of 5777. Remember this guy? Good yontav, yontav, how's it? Which shul did you go to? Who's the rabbi there? Where you going first night? Yeah, there are lots of questions that get asked. But what is Jewish New Year all about? Rosh Hashanah, also known as the Jewish New Year, is the first of the Jewish High Holy Days that were listed in Leviticus. You laugh, you cry, you are judged by God. Sounds fun, right? It starts with a blast from the shofar. which calls us to humble ourselves and recognize our need for God's grace. Next day, gather at the nearest stream or river to symbolically cast away sin. This is called tashle, which means cast off. It is customary to greet one another by saying, Lashana tova techatevu, which means may your name be inscribed for a good year. The inscribing refers to the Book of Life, which according to Jewish tradition closes 10 days later. Jewish tradition includes rounded challah to represent the crown of God and the dipping of apples and honey to wish for a sweet and fruitful year. Rabbis and cantors wear white to represent purity. I wonder if Daniel Andrews is in with a chance of being written in the good book. And how about this lady? Now we are in danger of being swamped by Muslims who bear a culture and ideology that is incompatible with our own. I don't happen to agree with Pauline Hanson, but I wonder how many good books she's in at the moment. If you are not prepared to become Australian and give this country your undivided loyalty, obey our laws, respect our culture and way of life, then I suggest you go back where you came from. Yeah, Darren clearly wondering whether she's in the good book or not. You can do all sorts of things with a mixture of ingredients. So whether you're Pauline Hansen or a local imam, this Jewish New Year, why don't you try and combine the different ingredients and make something really sweet? Yeah, if you've ever wondered what you're going to do with half a chala, well, now you know. Now, just back to that good book thing. What about what about this guy? Donald J. Trump! So does Donald make it into the good book? And does he actually think he can win this election? Well, I don't know. I think I'd win. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't go into lose. I've never gone into lose in my life. <laughs> If I had to bet my life on anyone being written in the good book, it would definitely be these guys, the lone soldiers, people from all over the world who voluntarily come to the land of Israel and join the Israel Defense Force. Extraordinary people, well deserving of all the fun and games that we can throw at them. Up and share the sweetness. The past year has made many of us feel overwhelmed. We've seen social injustices happening around the world and even here, in our own backyard. Human rights abuses have been exposed. It can make us feel hopeless and ineffective. Sometimes it feels easier to just escape into our everyday distractions. This Jewish New Year, you can make a difference. Stand Up invites you to become a part of a growing movement, a movement of people who refuse to remain silent bystanders. You can stand up and help the disadvantaged in our community to reach their full potential. By donating this new year, you can make a difference to the emerging community Stand Up works with. $50 will provide two hours of professional tutoring for refugee school students. $100 will help run a leadership program for Indigenous youth. $300 will give 25 disadvantaged children a full day of holiday activities. This new year, you can help make a change.
Stand up and share the sweetness. Donate today. Standup.org.au slash Rosh Hash. It's Rosh Hashanah, the new year. Time for us to think about our lives and the direction that they're going in. And let the sound of the chauffeur guide us. Take a listen. I'll be listening to the shofars of Spirit Grow. Rabbis Menachem and Label Wolf have an extraordinary story to tell. Some years ago, early in the morning, two wise men, my father and the Dalai Lama, sat down for a few hours of discussion. The Dalai Lama had invited me to come and discuss two questions with him. One question was, what is the secret of Jewish longevity? How have we survived the exile? Because his people were moving into exile. And secondly, what was the secret of the Jewish family? Why was it so successful? In passing, he mentioned a phrase that resonated in my mind and concerned me. He said, if it wasn't for the Jewish people, there'll be no such thing as Western Buddhism. This is a Jewish genius who was attracted to Buddhism, and yet if he would embrace his Jewishness, perhaps he could save the human race from extinction? Now we see the creation of a new massive class of useless people. As computers become better and better in more and more fields, there is a distinct possibility that computers will outperform us in most tasks and will make humans redundant. And then the big political and economic question of the 21st century will be, what do we need humans for? Or at least, what do we need so many humans for?